Hi, young people. Man, you can't blame the really for being safety sallies. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people that may not like this or might think this is a bad idea. I mean, I don't have a problem with it. I don't really want to be running in front of these guys unless this is my team and I know these guys. Um, does this training have, um, I guess, meaning or skills that are needed or required? Yeah, it makes you pay attention. Is it risky? Um, yeah, it's risky. What what most people who run around who are safety sallies, they've never done much risky. Uh, because in a real high risk life or death, things happen. And the better you're prepared, the better it is. So am I saying this is absolutely great training? Everybody should do it? Mm, maybe not, because there's a lot of people that probably shouldn't do this. There's a lot of people that carry guns that probably shouldn't have guns but because they're not real confident. But you know what? It's your right, and if you want to have a gun, you can have it. It's up to you on how well you trained and how proficient you are with it. Uh, so most training is good. There's some good and bad in this. Let's take a look at what happens here and then see. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of safety sellers that are just peeing their pants right now. Oh my god! He lasered him and he's downrange and according to the range master, nobody should be downrange in the fire land when somebody's shooting because it's dangerous and somebody Well, guess what? Nobody did get shot. Everybody controlled the firing. People were aware of their environment. They knew how to stop firing. They knew how to concentrate on their target and shoot only at their target, teaching proper uh sight alignment or gun discipline or sight discipline to where you shoot when you have a clear line of sight to your target and you're aware that sometimes some people are panicking or scaring and they might come in front of you and better to experience it here than the first time when you shoot a good guy or a good child running out of a building because the only way you've trained is once you pull your gun you just do a mag dump like American cops do and shoot every round you can with no regard for anyone's safety or your background because that's how American cops are shooting and trained now uh, so I'm sure all the safety sallies will have a PP fit but you know what I, I don't have a problem with this uh, I, I would probably only do this with my team um, I have been in a shoot house where all of our team members have to be in there and play hostage and the rest of the team enters with live fire, and we do live fire while you're sitting in there, and we're shooting targets around you. Now, is that moving and running in front of the gun? No. Uh, a lot of people may not want to sit in that room when a team enters, but I thought it was good training, and I thought it was uh, it built trust. It built uh, it put really high tension on people, and guess what? It was risky. Somebody could have got shot. Oh my goodness! You know what? If you don't want to take a chance of skinning your knee, don't walk or run. Okay? If you don't want to take a chance of your parachute not open, don't jump out of a plane. And if you don't want to take a chance that maybe when you're around guns and ammo that accidents or things can happen, then don't be around them. Uh, this constant safety sally of wanting everybody to wear a helmet, uh, you know, eye protection, a neck wrap, uh, you know, bulletproof protection underwear, in order to be safe every time you're around a gun is just the further promotion of idiot and lack of common sense. Um, I don't have a problem with this training. People want to tell me I'm dangerous and I would never train with you and you're crazy. Whatever. I mean, you can do what you want. To see, that's the, that's the great thing about training and and freedoms is people who want to train like this can. And the safety sallies who want to wear their pink earmuffs and stand on the firing line and have some range safety officer tell them what they can do and when they can do it and make sure their gun's unloaded and make sure their gun's loaded. And, and if they want to shoot and train that way, well, they can do that too. Uh, that's not my style. I don't like it. I think it promotes incompetence. But you know what? Now, here's another problem I have with this. Let's watch this a little bit more. I don't know if this is a guy or girl. A guy wants to be a girl, ponytail, I don't know. He's got a ponytail. I, I can't tell if it's a guy or girl. But his grip looks like, and it's hard for me to tell, 
looks like he's got a revolver grip. His thumb is wrapped over behind his hand instead of thumbs up, thumbs forward, etc. So bad grip for a semi-automatic. Plus, he or she, I don't know which one it is, causes a jam. Could it be limp wristing? I don't know. Could it be? I don't know what causes it. But the first time he tries to clear it, he tries to clear it. I can't tell. Oh, he pointed at Oh, my God. So here you see him or her trying to clear the malfunction. She's looking down. Uh, this is what I call negative training. Uh, I always taught and I always like to promote if you clear a malfunction and it gets more than a tap and rack, then you need to drop down to one knee or move to cover. Don't practice standing and clearing because if you get in a gunfight and your gun jams, you're going to do exactly what this person is doing. Standing up, looking down at the gun and trying to clear it. Because you haven't trained that when I clear something more than a tap and rack, I need to drop to one knee. And I don't even care if you train to go to one knee for a tap and rack. Uh, it, it, it makes your target smaller. It makes you a smaller target. It gets you lower to ground. You can go to prone. It's harder, you know, it's harder for the bad guy to shoot you. So I wouldn't care if you went to knee, but normally on the fly, if you're running and moving and you get a jam, you tap and rack and stay in the fight. But if you have to do more than a tap and rack, it looks like he's probably trying to strip the mag, probably going to clear a stovepipe or something, maybe a double feed. That's going to take a little bit more time. He ought to be on his knee and not standing up like he's on a range, like he's in a safe place, training. You know, they're doing this advanced training here, and then they're doing this negative bad training here by allowing people to clear guns standing up like that. Hang on. It gets better. Now he goes down to one knee. Good. Hang on. Range guy there doesn't get involved. I always ran range the same way. You clear your malfunction. You get your gun back in a battery. You do what you need to do. I ain't here to babysit you because I ain't going to be babysitting you in the field. Do what you need to do if you were in a real fight. Okay, don't do stupid crap like the people who are saying this is dangerous and they're lasering and you should never do this. These are the same people that will raise their hands on a freaking gun range when their gun malfunctions, which is about to happen. Heard the slide go forward. All right, back in the fight. And we got another jam. And what do I do? I'll just raise my hand. Guess what this woman or man is going to do in a real gunfight? He's going to get shot right here where his vest would be because he's got his hand up in the air because his gun malfunctions. This is bad training. This is, I have much more problem with this. The safety foul, Sally's will love this. Well, you should, you know, some people, when they clear, they point sideways, and they don't know how to clear properly. And Rick, a, a range master should be there to absolutely intervene, and he shouldn't clear that gun. He should be removed from the line to keep it safe. Oh, you freaking idiots who have never trained for real life, and your freaking little line range experts want to go ahead and dog everybody. Look, what, I got a much bigger problem with this than I got a guy running in front of him. And I don't know everybody's going to call me crazy, but it is what it is. That's my opinion. Take it or leave. All righty. Well, you know, to each his own, everybody can do what they want to do. If you want to. Heil Hitler in the middle of a shooting match because you think it's a good idea, knock yourself out. Train the way you want. I gave you my opinion from my experience in training. You can take it or leave it. Don't be crying in the comments. We'll end that there.